these are the best cybersecurity certifications for 2023. So I get this question a lot, especially on cybersecurity certifications ranging from beginner to mid and more senior roles. So this video will provide you a list of the top six certifications to help you grow in your cybersecurity career. The first one on this list is the Simply Learn Postgraduate Program in Cybersecurity. This certification program was created in collaboration with the MIT Schwarzman College of Computing and the EC Council, which is well known for their popular certifications, including the CEH or the Certified Ethical Hacking Certification. It was rated as the best cybersecurity certification bootcamp in 2022 by Course Report. It has a 4.5 star rating on SwitchUp and Course Report. The program itself is about six months long. It is a fully online bootcamp, so you can take it from anywhere. There are going to be more than 1 million cybersecurity jobs that will be available by 2023, but less than 400,000 cybersecurity professionals will be trained to fill them. Along with an expected growth of about 23% in the next 10 years for cybersecurity roles, this is one of the best ways to get started as a beginner with no prior experience. Some of the course key features include graduating with this postgraduate certificate, master classes from MIT faculty, modules from the MIT Schwarzman College and EC Council throughout your course, 25 hands-on projects with live online classes conducted by industry experts and access into the MIT CSAIL professional programs community. As part of the outcomes of this graduate program, you do get access to the EC Council learning kit and exam voucher and 24 hacking challenges from EC Council. The learning path includes designing systems to secure applications, networks, and devices, building a hacker mindset and defending against future attacks, designing, engineering, and managing the overall security posture this course specifically is aligned with the CISSP technology application and policy and then finally ending the course with your cybersecurity capstone project along with an MIT cybersecurity masterclass so this course really is a mix of various different areas in cybersecurity for example you have the CEH which is mostly focused on the red teaming offensive side you have the MIT SCC Sportsman College of Computing which is very well known in the technology space and a cybersecurity course specifically aligned with the CISSP which is another very very popular cybersecurity Security certification, more in their mid and senior career. Skills covered include advanced hacking concepts, IDS firewalls and honeypots, software development security, security assessment and testing. The application process for Simply Learn is also very straightforward. You submit your application where selected candidates begin the program within one to two weeks. To be eligible for the postgraduate program in cybersecurity, you do need a bachelor's degree, but you do not need to have any programming background or any prior work experience. The cost for the program is $3,000 and can also be paid in monthly installments at $265 per month. If you are interested in joining the Simply Learn MIT postgraduate program in cybersecurity, feel free to check them out in the link in my description. And you can also get a 10% scholarship using my code Sandra10. All right, next up on this list is the new Google cybersecurity certification. There's definitely been a lot of buzz on this certification. I've heard about it a lot. I've heard my coworkers talk about it. I've heard other creators talk about it. And there's definitely a lot of buzz around the certification. And I can definitely see why. There are a lot of perks that come with the certification that also make it really good for beginners. So it is a Google certificate that is hosted on Coursera, along with a number of other their Google certificates. Just based on the stats on the certification page, it is meant for a beginner with no previous experience and it is a six month long certification at seven hours per week with a flexible schedule so you can really learn at your own pace. A few highlights include identifying common risks, threats, and vulnerabilities and how to mitigate them hands-on experience with Python, Linux, and SQL. I think SQL is a very interesting option to put in there. Personally, I haven't used SQL in any of my previous jobs in cybersecurity, but I also think it is very foundational and I'm sure there are lots of other tools that cybersecurity professionals use for querying that SQL could be a very good precursor for. For example, if you're using Splunk or Datadog or, or some kind of tool that has a query builder, having experience with SQL can give you somewhat of a leg up because you're able to understand the basic formats and structures, even if you're not directly using SQL. Understanding the importance of cybersecurity practices and their impact for organizations. And finally, protecting networks, devices, people, and data from unauthorized access and cyber attacks. Skills gain include Linux, Python, SIM tools, IDS tools, and SQL. I do think that it's pretty interesting that they added a section for preparing for the job search. That is definitely a very important part that I think would be very helpful, especially because most of the people taking this course are coming from no prior experience. They may not even know the formats of cybersecurity interviews. They may not know what to expect. And honestly, it's very overwhelming as a beginner. Even after you complete a course or certificate, going right into the job search, it may be a little bit daunting. So I do think that it's helpful that they are helping prepare their candidates for job interviews and job readiness. So the pricing model of Coursera is going to be a little bit different as it is a subscription-based model. You do get a seven-day free trial and then the cost will be $40 five dollars per month to continue learning after the trial ends you're really going through the course at your own speed so it's really up to you how much the course finally costs you at the end of the program as part of the seven day free trial you get unlimited access to all courses and their certificate the lectures the assignments participating in discussion forums etc and you can cancel at any time and then there's also coursera plus where you have unlimited access to 7,000 plus worldwide courses and hands-on projects and certificate programs all included in one subscription 
So that's about $10 more per month. And that also has a seven day free trial. So again, it really up to you how you decide to learn. But I do appreciate that there are certifications and programs out there now that have different payment options, whether it's through monthly installments or subscription, and just basically more flexible ways to pay for those learning resources. All right, the next certification I want to talk about on this list is the CompTIA Security Plus. You guys know I had to put this on the list, especially because this is a certification that I actually got in my early career. And I think personally, it's really helped me get jobs in the entry level and early career phases of my career. This is definitely one of the OG cybersecurity certifications for beginners. You do not need any prior experience to take this exam. You do not need any educational background either. The current exam code that is live is the SYO 601 exam. And I also think that the Security Plus is one of the most common certifications that employers are going to look for in those entry level and early career roles in cybersecurity. For example, security analyst roles, SOC analyst roles, even some IT help desk, sysadmin and networking roles. It is also popular because it is compliant to a few DOD and ISO standards where if a certain company needs to hire for, for ISO 17024 or to fulfill the DOD 8570 compliance, they will be hiring someone who has their CompTIA Security Plus certification. So what are the actual topics on the exam itself? There are five main sections of the exam, attacks, threats, and vulnerabilities, architecture and design, implementation, as well as governance, risk, and compliance. Personally, I took about three to four months to study for this exam while working full time. I personally use the all-in-one CompTIA Security Plus. I know there are a lot of courses out there, online courses out there. Uh, Professor Messer has a lot of resources on Security Plus and other CompTIA certifications. I use a mix of online video courses along with this textbook. And so you don't have to spend a whole lot of money on certification resources. If you just start off with a $30 textbook rental and some free learning resources that you can find online, the exam itself is about 90 questions. It is all multiple choice and performance-based. Performance-based, I really want to call out here because you should really do some practice questions. Um, CompTIA has a practice question, one specific practice question that they have on their website to show you what the layout of the performance-based questions will look like on the exam. I think there's about three to four on each exam. I know this will vary depending on your exam since everyone's will look different, but it's going to be some kind of mix of drag and drop, fill in blanks, essentially just an interactive question that isn't just multiple choice. And you'll need a passing score of 750 out of 900 to pass. Now CompTIA does have a recommended experience section before you take the Security Plus exam. You don't have to do this. And the cost to take the exam is $392. All right, the next certification on this list is for the CISSP or the Certified Information System Security Professional. It's definitely one of the core or cybersecurity certifications out there. And on their website, you'll see who ISC2 recommends to take the CISSP. This includes CISOs, CIOs, security directors, IT directors and managers, security analysts, security auditors, architects, consultants, essentially everyone in cybersecurity from the individual contributor of a security analyst all the way up to the CISO level. So as you can see, this is a definitely very broad ranging certification. It covers eight different domains, including security and risk management, asset security, security architecture and engineering, communication, network security. They do provide a CISSP exam outline on their website that you can download. But one of the most important things to note is the fact that you do need five years of cumulative paid work experience, quote unquote, in two or more of the eight domains of the CISSP. So not only do you have to pass the exam, you also need to get those cumulative five years of work experience. If you pass the exam without getting that experience, you technically are not yet CISSP certified. There are a few nuances in terms of how to save one year of work experience or getting the associates of ISC. There are lots of different routes about it. So it is a five-year rule, but you can also take the exam first, pass it, and then get the work experience after. And then once you finish getting that work experience, once it's verified, then you'll be CISSP certified. So again, they are pretty stern on the years of experience requirement. So it's not as simple as the CompTIA Security Plus, but they do have some wiggle room around it. As of right now, when you look on their website, it mentions that the CISSP exam registration fee has increased to $740 dollars compared to its old price of $699. And I think you'll see that across a lot of these certifications. Then I would always double check the website to see the exact fee of what the exam actually costs. All right, next up on this list is the OSCP or the Offensive Security Certified Professional Certification. This is one of the holy grail certifications for red teaming, for ethical hacking, offensive security in general. As someone who used to work on a junior pen testing team, I remember speaking specifically to my mentor with him studying and preparing for this exam. A lot of it is practice using the OSCP labs because because they do have boxes that you can practice on before you go into the actual exam. So this is a very hands-on exam. While this exam is definitely for high-level cybersecurity professionals, on their website they've listed some prerequisites and none of these prerequisites involve any years of experience or anything. So personally, I think that's pretty cool. They do mention a solid understanding of TCIP and IP networking, reasonable Windows and Linux administration experience, and familiarity with basic bash and or Python scripting. So these prerequisites really sound very, very minimal. So on their website, you'll see different ways to enroll and it comes 
comes with different bundles so as i mentioned before there are labs that you can practice on online and they'll give you access to the labs for a certain number of days depending on the package that you buy for example they have three bundles the most popular one is the one-time payment for 90 days of lab access, one exam attempt, and one course. They do provide a full syllabus of the actual content of the exam that you can check out on their website. And honestly, I think this should be part of the prerequisite section rather than the syllabus section because as someone who may be starting off going into red teaming, they may think that they're ready for this exam based on the prerequisites, even when the actual full syllabus is a lot more in depth. Right, so you guys might have already guessed, but the setup for this exam is definitely a little bit different than a typical cybersecurity exams. It is very hands-on. It is 24 hours long, so up to you to decide whether or not you want to sleep during this exam or not and reading directly on their exam guide from the OFSEC website you have 23 hours and 45 minutes to complete the exam the OSCP certification exam simulates a live network on a private VPN which contains a small number of vulnerable machines if you start your exam at 9 a.m. today that means it will end at 8 45 a.m. the next day once the exam is finished you'll have another 24 hours to upload your documentation all OSCP exams are proctored the exam structure for points is out of 100 points with 60 points coming from three independent targets and 20 points coming from two clients and one domain controller. You'll have some specific instructions for each target and you're also required to write a professional report describing your exploitation process for each target. You must document all of your attacks including all steps, all commands issued, console output in the form of a penetration test report. Your documentation should be thorough enough that your attacks can be replicated step by step by a technically competent reader. This is where I really emphasize the importance of documentation in cybersecurity, especially for red teaming, offensive security, pen testing. Not only is this exam very technically rigorous, it also requires you to be very good at documenting the exact steps that you took. Now, there are lots of other requirements that they've listed on their website for the types of screenshots, the documents, the files you can submit. All right, last but not least on this list is the GSEC certification or the GAC Security Essential certification. I think this certification is definitely comparable to the CompTIA Security Plus certification. So this is another very popular entry-level certification. The areas covered include defense in-depth, cryptography, cloud, defensible network architecture, Linux, SIEM. GSEC is for anyone who is new to information security, security managers, operations, IT engineers. The exam is 106 to 180 questions taken within four to five hours with a minimum passing score of 73%. GAC also has training available that you can purchase along with your exam voucher as well as practice exams. So there are many learning resources for you specifically. Personally, I think if you're taking the CompTIA Security Plus, then you don't necessarily need to take the GSEC because I think they're pretty comparable, but it's really up to you which one that you would rather take. Companies are typically going to look for one of two of these certifications on your resume when you're applying to jobs that are more entry level or early career, but it is another option for you if you decide not to take your CompTIA Security Plus. All right, so that is it for this video. Hopefully this gave you insight into the best certifications for cybersecurity professionals in 2023, ranging from entry level, no experience, all the way up to very advanced offensive security. I would love to hear you guys' thoughts in the comments below on any of the certifications that you're studying for or maybe something that I should have included onto this list. And don't forget to check out the Simply Learn postgraduate program made in partnership with MIT and the EC Council linked in my description below. Reminder, you can get a 10% scholarship using my code SANDRA10 at sign up and the newest cohort is starting soon. So definitely be sure to enroll if you're interested. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. And if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and turn on post notifications. I post videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.